Bittersweet Dissonance by Watermelons Melon Felon. Chapter 3 Victor Yuri, why are you staying in a hostel? Yuri A what? Victor Edin Yuri Um How did you find that out? Victor, I have friend who might have seen you, and they told me because they were a little concerned, and now I'm concerned too. Yuri, I got evicted. Victor, what? Yuri, my landlord was being a jerk. Victor, crap. Yuri, he sent me the letter and I decided to get out sooner rather than later. Victor, what about the bed? Yuri, I rented that. Victor, the sofa? Yuri, I had to sell that. Victor, so you're all alone and have no one with you? Yuri, I suppose. Victor, and do you like the hostel? Yuri, it's okay, I guess. Free breakfast, free Wi-Fi. I'd have to pay to wash my laundry, but that's fine. And it's kept clean every day, so I'm not dying in filth. Also, a large bed. Even if it smells like stale air. Victor. Yuri! Yuri. I really can't complain. It's better than the apartment was. Victor. Well, I have Wi-Fi and food and the washing machine and the big bed. You could have stayed with me. Yuri. What? Uh, 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 Victor. I have a poodle, too. Her name is Maka and she is a downling. Yuri. Victor... You realize you just suggested that we share a bed, right? Victor. Hmm? Oh! I have a guest room, silly Yuri. Yuri. Shut up! Victor. No, if you wanted to get into bed with me that much, all you had to do was ask. Victor. Lear. Yuri. You are horrible! I was pointing out that you were inviting a stranger to share with you. Victor, I've known you for almost two months. I met, have met you in person 14 times. We've exchanged numbers. I followed your Twitter and IG. Yuri, well... Victor, I paid you to play me music. We aren't exactly strangers now. Yuri, still... I'd feel bad. Victor, but I have a poodle. She's fuzzy and loves cuddles. Yuri, maybe... Victor, and you wouldn't be alone. Everyone needs a good old poodle in their life. Yuri, I would have to pay rent. I refuse handouts. Victor, frowny face. Fine, you play my piano for me and you can say. Yuri, you have a piano? What? Victor, yes, it was a gift for a commercial I did. And it'll go to waste, otherwise it's like a play more than chopsticks. Yuri. Just playing the piano? Victor. We can take turns cooking dinner. I boil a meat noodle. Smiley face. Yuri. I'm not the greatest cook either. I know only a few things. Victor. We can learn together. It'll be fun. Please? Yuri. I will help my grocery. I have to do more than piano. Victor. Yes! And maybe you can finally do thrust plaster on the piano. Yuri, you're really looking forward to that. Victor, yeah. Where am I picking you up? Yuri, what now? Victor, yeah. We can get you settled in and have dinner before you have to go to work. Yuri, um, Victor, please. Yuri, okay. Victor, should I come to get you or will you prefer to get my address? Yuri, I can catch a cab to your place. I have one bag of clothes, my violin in its case, and my laptop, nothing else. Victor, can't wait to see you! Victor jumped off the sofa and rushed to get clean linens from the hall closet. If he wanted Yuri to be comfortable, he had to make the room as comfortable as possible. Also, he'd have to make the bed, roll the piano into the room so Yuri would be able to use it at his leisure, and get one of the shag rugs from the storage room so he didn't have to deal with the cold floor. The guest room, which was usually used by either Chris or Yurachka when either needed to stay over for a time, was really bare in terms of color. Victor had never felt a need to go wild in terms of decorating a room that was rarely used. He felt a little bad for that now. 
it was just all white. The walls and floor were devoid of any sort of color. The bed frame and bedding matched. He'd made a very small effort by putting up a lavender painting of a ballet dancer above the bed, but it didn't do much for the overall lacking theme in the room. Yuri would probably like it, though, if he did ballet in the past. And if he didn't like it, there was always the option of redecorating, which was something Victor had unmatched talent at. And spending money. He was good at that as well. They'd have to get more decorations for the room so Gary would feel more at home. It was a lot like a hospital now that he thought about it. Victor didn't like hospitals or clinics. The rug he decided to lay down was black and the most startling contrast in the room. For a moment, he had considered a white one, but white stained easily and everything was white enough as it was. What if Yuri became stressed over it? In fact, Victor would definitely have to get more color in the room because Yuri was the anxious type who didn't like to cause problems or what he assumed were problems, and he'd probably worry a lot about ruining anything white. He'd simply have to ask when the man was settled in. <laughs> Yuri was going to be in his home, he realized. They would be living together from now on. He was so excited. He could show Yuri all of his favorite films, and they could listen to music together, and Victor would probably be able to ask for his help, now that they would no doubt be closer than before. And he wouldn't have to feel strange for wanting to spend more time with Yuri, because Yuri would already be with him. While sad for Yuri's situation, he was kind of glad. He would get Yuri to himself now. It was selfish, and perhaps a little creepy, but he really liked being with Yuri. He'd felt more calm than he had in a long time when with the other man. He would get all of Yuri's free time because the other man wouldn't have to go to the coffee shop just for Wi-Fi now, and they could be together more, and Victor could probably commission more personal playing and wouldn't have to freeze outside simply because Yuri was too stubborn to accept the warmth of the ring's lobby. My God, we are going to have company! Victor shouted once he was done making sure that Yuri's new room was in fit shape. It was the best he could do on such short a notice. The brown poodle barked and trotted down the hallway toward him, tongue hanging out on the one side. He bent down to ruffle the fur on her head. I hope you like him. I really like him. And I want him to feel at home with us. I want him to want to stay with us. Woof! Yuri has been having a tough time lately, so we need to be supportive friends for him until he finds his way. Okay, Maka? Woof! Good girl! Make sure to give him lots of kisses! They would be the best flatmates ever! No one could hate a fluffy poodle who only wanted love and a clingy but sexy man nearing his 30s who was very charismatic. It was a deadly combination that was impossible to hate, he was certain. Maybe they should greet Yuri with food? Victor could boil pasta with enviable skill and precision. For Yuri, though, Victor would even brave the kitchen if it meant surprising the other man. The doorbell rang at exactly six o'clock, and Victor whirled around from the pot he was intently stirring. He'd settled for simple pasta and sauce because he didn't have many groceries, and something was at least better than nothing after all. Besides, he was sure that Yuri wasn't used to getting full meals, or at least good meals, in the past few months, so the musician probably wouldn't mind. The skater placed his serving spoon down and went to answer the door, Maka trailing behind him in curiosity. And, as expected, Katsuki Yuri stood there in a long, navy blue coat, a black scarf wrapped around his neck. Slung over his left shoulder was a bag big enough for a laptop. In his left hand was the handle of a red and black striped suitcase. His right hand held his purple violin case. Yuri! It's been forever since I've seen you! I missed you! Victor said, a beaming grin on his face. Yuri fiddled with the hand of the violin case, eyes focusing on Victor's collarbone instead of his face. You saw me yesterday, Victor. As I said, forever, he lamented. Come in, please. I have your room all set up and everything. And if you don't like it, we can always decorate it if you want. I wheeled the piano in there for you, so it's all ready for you when you want it. The Japanese man paused in his fidgeting in order to bow as low as he could with the bag strap slipping off his shoulder. Th thank you, Victor. You've been very kind. As he stepped aside, Yuri's way was impeded by a big blob of curly brown fur. Maka! His darling friend of many years who had stuck him to the door in order to get a look at their new guest. The dog got in real close with Yuri's knees and sniffed several times to determine whether or not Yuri was friend or foe. 
Victor would never admit to the fact that his leg had bounced worriedly for those nine seconds. Nor would he ever tell anyone that he had been on the verge of tears should Maka decide that Yuri wasn't good enough for their home. Thankfully, like her owner, she had good taste and proceeded to bark up at Yuri and lift herself onto her hind paws in order to balance herself against the man and slobber his chin with sopping wet kisses. Just as Victor had asked her to only an hour previous. Yuri's flush outshone his smile by miles and was enough to tell Victor that everything was going to be okay. After we get you settled in, Maka and I made pasta and we want you to try it. Once again, he was faced with Yuri's serene and grateful smile. I can't wait to see how well you both did. Victor's night was going to be spent in utter bliss. He and Maka now had a friend who was going to stay over for an undetermined amount of time. Things wouldn't be as quiet or lonely in the house anymore. He'd finally be able to integrate himself into Yuri's life in a way that wasn't creepy or could be considered creepy. There were many plans in order. Victor just had to work on how to go about setting them into motion. He took the other suitcase in order to help him. I hope you like sausages, because I love having them in my pasta. If it was this easy to get Yuri to blush, even when he wasn't being suggestive, he couldn't wait to see Yuri's reactions when he was being naughty. So do you have any friends at the bar? Victor asked him as they were sat down for dinner, his poodle resting at their feet. Do you get together and do things, or is it just hard work and no play? Yuri twirled his fork around the rigatoni and shrugged. I do a lot of work and don't normally get a chance to have fun. It depends on the night in particular. Slow nights mean I can go home early, but also means less tips and less payment overall, so it depends on how you'd view it. There are themed nights where a certain genre can only be played, and then there are nights where it doesn't matter. Theme nights are actually harder, but they do end up paying well because we have specific guests who come for those nights only. Also, we each have a hat, and people can choose to tip us if they want. So it's like being a street performer, but instead of freezing, you're really hot, and instead of standing half the time, you get to sit all the time. Victor nodded as he took a bite of the food he'd so generously made for them. It was some of the best food Yuri had had in a long time. No more fast food stops or 30-second meals. He might even be able to make the man his favorite dish, Katsudan. I am friends with Ellie. She's the bartender, and she's kind of terrifying in her own way. I really like her. We haven't done more besides exchanging SNS info, though. Is it an okay job for you? He shrugged. It wasn't that great, but it seriously could be worse. He was paid a moderate sum, and every week it would build up nicely until it had managed to be enough for the ridiculously high rent at the end of the month. Anything else he wanted, though, had been paid for by the money he got when performing in parks and on the sides of busy streets. It wasn't something he'd ever thought he would do, having been a social recluse growing up and being very anxious around people. And it wasn't to say he was any better these days, but he was good at losing himself to his music, and he didn't necessarily have to talk to anyone while he performed each and every day. So he could compromise. Survival took the front seat, first and foremost. I'm fortunate to have what I have now, so I can't complain. Victor sent him a smile over the rim of his glass. You are an inspiring person, Yuri. That was unexpected, but also very touching. Yuri ducked his head so that Victor couldn't see his embarrassment. He wasn't used to people aiming such kind words in his direction. He wasn't anyone special, but Victor made him feel as if he was special. It was nice. I think the world could use an outlook like yours. Maybe we'd all feel better that way. Maybe we'd all be better people if we were like you, Yuri. One thing Yuri knew very well of was that if Victor was going to insist on spending their time in such ways with him flattering Yuri so much, Yuri wasn't going to make it living under the same roof. He wasn't used to compliments, but when Victor gave them, he felt warm and accepted. And while it wasn't like he'd been shunned his whole life or anything, he'd never been someone others took notice in because he was just another guy upon first glance, and rarely did people bother to stick around and get to know him. And it was also nice to be appreciated by someone so kind and amazing. I'm just a man who is aware of himself. That is all, said Yuri quietly, holding his fork out to the darling poodle beneath the table. The last rigatoni was given an offering, which the poodle gobbled up immediately. He'd always wanted a dog. 
Maka would probably be the best chance he'd get at having one. I'm sorry, Victor. We don't have the time to help you this season. If you can wait until August, then maybe we can squeeze some time in for you. But there's just too much for all of us right now to have to add more to our struggling. We have deadlines and I cannot lose my job just to pull strings for you. Otherwise, I would gladly push certain clients aside. Victor sighed, having expected it to happen. Not that he was happy about it. Still, he had tried to keep a positive outlook on the whole process up until the very end. They hadn't been ready a month ago and now wouldn't be able to help him at all. And at least he had a backup plan in place should this had ended up a failure. So he wasn't that put out over it. It's fine, he said honestly, shifting his mobile to his other hand. I had the feeling that this would happen, so it's fine. I don't in any way blame you or your company. I can refer you to some friends of mine if that'll help your search, Sheila offered. Guilt thoroughly lazing her voice. They'd worked together many a time in the past, so she must have understood what a letdown it had been. But he didn't want her feeling bad. Not everyone could afford to cater to him, and he knew that very well. It didn't stop him from trying at times, but this wasn't one of those times. He's fine, Victor reiterated. I have someone to ask. I just wanted to be sure you weren't available before I went and asked him. Thanks for being upfront about it, though. If you're sure... She murmured quietly. Then I hope everything goes well on your end. You as well. Good luck with your upcoming competitions. He snorted. I simply pray for good fortune. Good weather on the plane ride. Good service at the hotel. Decent reporters at the press conference. Fair judging. Yes, he prayed hard like he did every time. After the call, Victor decided that it was finally time to ask Yuri to do the music. He'd already been mentally syncing the choreography he'd made to the two arrangements Yuri had composed. And as it would be a business transaction, he would be able to pay the other for his hard work. It would all work swimmingly if he could find the right time to ask. Though it certainly couldn't be immediately. They weren't close enough yet. Oi, Victor! What's going on with the music for our routines? Yurachka demanded, looking like a fierce kitten who hadn't gotten his way. He probably didn't know that his hair was sticking up in various directions. Victor felt no compunction to tell him either it would be cute to see his reaction later on. I've decided to ask Yuri to help us. What? Victor merely grinned and removed his skate guards. He was certain that everything would work out. He had befriended Yuri. Now he got to live with him, saw him half naked the night previous, which was the most glorious thing ever, and he might even get to work alongside the man in the near future. All would go according to plan once it was safe to enact said plan. And if he played his cards right, Katsuki Yuri might desire to make Russia his permanent place of residence. Victor could be very persuasive when he wanted to be, and he really wanted to be. Why are you grinning like an idiot? The young blonde asked. Eyes narrowed upon Victor's almost love-struck face. You are creeping me out, and I don't like it. Yurachka, you might come to understand the feeling when you're older. He crooned, voice slightly breathy. You're disgusting, the boy shouted before skating as far away as he could get, which wasn't all that far, to be honest. It was so easy to annoy the teen. Victor seemed to be particularly talented at eliciting desired responses from people named Yuri. It was a gift. He would probably train it up into a dangerous weapon. You finally get a better place? Yuri looked up at the bartender, Ellie. She reminded him very much of a sister, Mari, down to the two-toned hair, lazy demeanor, and needed to smoke something once every hour. She had a decent grasp of the English language and a dry sense of humor. She was the nicest of all his co-workers, and he preferred her company more than most. She'd also been the only one to realize that he'd been kicked out. It had happened to her before, so she knew the signs and had even offered her sofa to him, which was so very thoughtful. He told her only if he couldn't find a place in time. The inn wouldn't have lasted for very long on his meager paycheck and whatever he earned on the streets from day to day. If Victor hadn't been so insistent, he probably would be living off of Ellie and feeling terrible about it. Um, yeah, he admitted, thinking of Victor's megawatt heart smile and how warm his home was with his adorable poodle who was always ready for cuddles. I'm now staying with a friend I made a while back. 
he offered his guest room, and so I will play him music and help pay for the food, do chores, and sometimes cook in exchange for living there. Ellie cocked her brow. Play him music as part of your rent? Who is he? He snorted. Victor saw me performing outside his ice rink. He asked me to come by the next day so he'd actually have cash on him. And it became this thing. I go every other day. He challenges me to make new arrangements for random songs he either brings for me to listen to or chooses at random. It became a thing we do, and eventually he started calling me his friend and asked for my number. Ali seemed to understand that there was more to it. Her look expectant and knowing. It made him want to fidget, but he didn't want to be obvious. I sort of like him a lot. The Japanese man admitted, noting how his pulse raced at the thought of Victor Nikiforov. An irregular reaction. He hadn't even reacted to Mikhail in such a way. I can tell, the woman murmured before taking a deep drag from her cigarette. The smoke lingered in the air for several seconds, almost obscuring his view of her face. What's he do for a living? And is he trustworthy? Do I need to knock some heads around? So much like a sister that she made him feel more at home in Russia. Even just a little bit. He's a figure skater. His coach is a very scary man. I believe they're trustworthy. Besides, Victor has a poodle and Maka is adorable and well-behaved. So he has to be a good person. After all, how could a bad person raise such a sweet and gentle dog like Maka? L.A. seemed to f just freeze in place. Victor? She stated blandly. A guy with the receding hairline of an old man, but the body of a god? If Victor only knew that some people considered his hair to be old man hair, he tried not to laugh, but it was so hard. Victor had a really wide forehead. His hair would probably recede faster than others. And it was just so funny to think about the blunt words in reference to Victor. If you're talking about Victor Nikiforov, then yes. He said between juggles, completely beside himself at her description and willing to take it to the grave. Victor could never know. <laughs> the woman whistled. You bagged yourself a national treasure, Kotsky. Damn, do you aim high. Apparently, he really did. Peachy would lose his crap once he found out. Yori, you should do YouTube videos of your song covers. It would be good to get yourself out there and spread your talents. Victor said one evening when the two had just finished a Chinese film about the Great Wall and a war. It had been riveting, so Victor's non sequitur had jolted him for a moment. Um, I don't really have the tools necessary to... Victor was swiftly interrupting him, though. I have all sorts of things lying in unopened boxes because I never have need of them. We can totally do something to get you more notice. Victor seemed to think Yuri becoming a well-known artist was the most amazing thing ever. It was so strange that someone he hadn't even known that well yet was so intent upon seeing him succeed. Victor Nikiforov was like an angel. Just think about it, okay? Victor asked. Marco could be your mascot and then you'll get to share your amazing talent with the world! Perhaps, he said quietly, thinking about the pros and cons immediately. And true to his anxious brain, he came up with at least ten different reasons as to why this was a bad idea. And if he wanted to truly consider it, he'd have to take a deep breath and focus his attention on the overall picture instead of just the negative. I promise to think about it. Victor's sudden glomp probably crushed his ribs. Not that he minded. Pichu. Why? Why is a sexy international figure skater following your Twitter? And why are you following him back? Holy crap, he's talked about you and your thighs. Bro!